In this lesson, we're going to talk about the coordinate plane. Now, the coordinate plane um, has, if you can see, there are these two lines that are going um, north and south and east and west. And um, those two axes, they break up our um, coordinate plane into four different pieces. And the, the horizontal um, line is called the x-axis. And then the other line um, going from uh, north and south, that's called the y-axis. The way I like to remember that is um, y goes to the sky. Okay, and like I was saying, those two axes, they break the coordinate plane into four separate parts, each of those parts being called a quadrant. Now, whenever we um, are looking at each quadrant individually, we always start with quadrant one. That's going to be the upper right-hand corner quadrant. And then we're going to move to the left, and this is going to be quadrant two. And then we're going to move down to quadrant three. And then we're going to move back over to the right to quadrant four. You'll also notice that when I write those quadrants, I write them in Roman numerals. Now, if you ever forget um, where the quadrants lie, um, here's a little way to help you remember it. Um, but the coordinate plane, it actually begins with the word, with the letter C. And so if we actually draw C on our coordinate plane, you can see that the, the C in coordinate plane begins in um, the first quadrant. It moves to the second quadrant, down to the third, and it ends in the fourth quadrant. So that's a nice way to remember um, the quadrants of a coordinate plane. Another really important piece of the coordinate plane is the center point. Um, this is called the origin. Now, whenever you're graphing a coordinate on the coordinate plane, you always begin at the origin. It's where the point originates from. So you always start at that center point. And um, now that we know a little bit about a, a, the idea of the coordinate, the origin coordinate is going to look like 0, 0. Now let's go ahead and talk about what a, what a coordinate pair or a coordinate is. If we look up here, this is what a coordinate is. We always have coordinates um, in parentheses with a comma in between the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. The x-coordinate is always going to be moving from left to right, and then the y-coordinate is going to be moving up and down. Um, a very important thing to note here is that the x-coordinate always comes first. So when you start at your origin, you're always going to be moving left and right, and then you're going to move up and down. Now, a new seventh grade topic um, concerning the coordinate plane is the idea of a domain value. The x value of this coordinate we call a domain value. And the y coordinate or the y value of a coordinate is called the range value. So, a couple, um, one more thing here about the coordinate plane that you might find very interesting. When we're graphing a coordinate, Every coordinate in the first quadrant is going to be a positive x coordinate and a positive y coordinate. Every single one in the, in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, all of the coordinates are going to be a negative x and a positive y. In the third quadrant, all of the x's are going to be negative and all the y's are going to be negative as well. And then our fourth quadrant, all of our x-coordinates are going to be positive and our y-coordinates are going to be negative. Okay, now that we know the basics about a coordinate plane, let's go ahead and see if we can graph some coordinates. Okay, let's start with coordinate A. Coordinate A is 3, 2. Now, x is always going to be the first number and our y is always going to be the second number. So. I'm going to start at my origin, and you're going to notice I'm, I'm going to put my pen there, but I'm not actually going to draw anything at the origin. What I want to do is I want to count three spaces. Now, the question is, do I move to the right or to the left? Well, you can see that on our x-axis, just like a number line, to going to the right means positive, and then going to the left means negative. And likewise, on the y-axis, going upwards, is a positive and going downwards is a negative. 
So I'm going to start on my origin, and I'm going to look at my 3. My x-coordinate is a positive 3, so I'm going to move 3 to the right. 1, 2, 3. Okay, now I'm going to look at my y-coordinate. My y-coordinate says 2, and it's positive, so I'm going to go up. 1, 2. And I'm going to go ahead and plot my point right in that location. And I'm going to call that coordinate A. Let's try another one. Let's try B. All right, my first coordinate is going to be x and then y. So my domain is negative 4 and my range is 3. So I'm going to start at my origin. And this time I'm going to go 4 to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then my y coordinate is, or my y is going to be up 3, so 1, 2, 3. And I'm going to place my nice coordinate and I'm going to label him b. All right, c. I have my domain is negative 1 and my range is negative 4, so I'm going to start at my origin. I'm going to go to the left 1 on my x-axis, and I'm going to go down 4 on my y-axis. And that's going to be coordinate C. Okay, D, I'm going to start at my origin again. My x value is 2, and my y value is negative 5, so I'm going to go to the right 2, and I'm going to go down 5. That's going to land me all the way at the bottom here, and I'm going to label that as D. So that's a little bit about graphing coordinates. This is a great time to pause the video and try these ones all on your own. Okay, let's go ahead and plot E. I'm going to start at my origin, and I can see that my domain is negative 3, so I'm going to move 3 to the left, and my range is 1, so I'm going to move up 1. I'm going to label him E. Now. Getting to our little symbols, notice how in E, notice how my, my x coordinate is a negative number and my y coordinate is a positive number. Do you see how they connect here? That every single point in that quadrant is going to be a negative and then a positive number. Let's look at F. Start at my origin. My domain is 4, so I'm going to move to the right 4 since it's positive, and I'm going to go down 2 since my range is negative 2. I'm going to label him F. Notice how my 4 is positive and my, negative, my 2 is negative, matching up with those coordinates. G. Start at my origin, and I'm going to go to the left negative 5, and I'm going to go down 2. I'll label him G. And my last one, 3, 3. I'm going to start on my origin. I'm going to go positive 3 to the right and positive 3 up. And I'm going to label him H. <clears throat> and that is how you graph a coordinate pair. Okay, now let's go ahead and go backwards. <clears throat> this time, we want to look at the coordinate that's given on our coordinate plane and determine what is that coordinate. So let's start with L. So I'm going to start at my origin. You'll notice P is located at my origin, so I'm just going to kind of put my pen over him. And to get to L, I need to move to the left first and then up. If I do that, I move to the left, negative 5, and I move up 4. That would yield an X value of negative 5 and a Y value of 4. M. I'm going to start at my origin. And to get to M, I need to move to the left first. So I'm going to move to the left, negative 2. So my domain value is negative 2. And then from there, I'm going to move down 4. So my range value is going to be negative 4. N, I'm going to start at my origin. This time, I have to move to the right one. So my domain value is positive 1. Then I'm going to move up 3, which is my range value of 3. P, P, like I said, is the origin. He doesn't move left or right, and he doesn't move up or down. So I'm going to keep him as 0, 0. Q, I'm going to start at my origin. I'm going to move 4 to the right. That's going to be my domain value. And then I'm going to move down 2. That's going to be my range value. Now, there's only one type of coordinate that we haven't talked about in this lesson. And I'd like to bring it up. And it's a coordinate like this coordinate that I'm putting up here right now. We're going to call him R. Now, R is a point that lies on the x-axis. 
and you can see that um, he only moves to the right. He doesn't move up or down. So therefore, the coordinate for R would be positive 3 to the right. And then I'm not moving up or down at all, so my Y is going to be 0. Also, I could have a coordinate down here, like the coordinate S. Now the coordinate S is on the Y axis. So you'll see if I start at the origin, if I say the X coordinate is first, I'm not moving left or to the right. So my X value, my domain is zero. But then I'm going to move down four, which is my range value. So negative four is my range value. So those are two different types of coordinates that ha weren't in any of the examples, but still lie on the coordinate plane. Now. If I asked you what quadrant does R sit in, it does not sit in the first quadrant and it does not sit in the fourth quadrant. It sits on the x-axis. Likewise, S does not sit in the third quadrant and it does not sit in the fourth quadrant. It's actually on the y-axis. Okay, so that is the lesson on the coordinate plane.